welcome friends to this holiday party today when i get a little late like i am today i tell a story <laughs> these uh, great stores like walmart and walgreens and some other big grocery store that are here they are hiring recently retired people as greeters so these retired people they just want to work they don't care about the salary they have got big pensions and so on but they like to be involved in something so that is why they accept these jobs as greeter there was one greeter who was hired by walmart and he was very nice he greeted people so nicely the sales went up so people would love to go to that particular walmart but he would come 10 minutes 15 minutes late every day the manager said my friend you are coming late you are such a good person everybody respects you they like you but you come late every day what would your people say in your office when you came late like this in your previous job and he put his head down he said they would say good morning admiral may i bring your coffee <laughs> that's good story to get forgiveness for me day <laughs> i am very happy that i can spend this time with you uh, this is a friendship that we have uh, when i see you individually or collectively it's a strange feeling that i have known you for a long time that we are old friends even people coming to me for the first time in this physical life look like we have known each other earlier i don't know where this feeling comes from but it establishes a kind of relationship that's very difficult to find normally in the world a kind of friendship that seems to be set up long ago and will last forever it's not the kind of <coughs> casual acquaintance we have with people so that that is why sometimes one gets a feeling that these relationships we have are not born out of our contacts in this life they may be from previous lives we recirculate again and again because the karmic pattern is such that we have to meet the same people again and again we don't have karma with some people and then we come pay off with some other people the law of karma says that we have to settle the accounts with the same people by the way the karma is created by the human mind it is not created by nature it is not created by animals and birds and so on it is created by the human mind when the human mind intends to do something it creates a karma if it actually does that it enhances the effect of that karma but the law of karma says that the only only form of life in which karma can be created is the human form and it is created at the level of the mind not at the level of the action of the body some people think that it is the action that creates karma that is not true you can have many actions unintentional not knowing and not in conscious awareness so many actions we do of which we are not even aware of or they are so accidental that we have no intention how can that be creating a karma to pay off that is why the law of karma says that only when we intend to do something karma is created whether we do it or not but if the action is carried out the impact of that karma for repayment is enhanced that is what the law of karma says karma is created by the mind and paid off by the mind it's not paid off by the body or by the sense perceptions or by anything else it's created in the mind and paid off by the mind if the mind feels happy you got a good result from your good karma and if your mind is sad and in uh, pain then you are paying off a bad karma what determines what is good and bad karma is also our own mind the mind determines what is good and bad and that is based upon where we are born who our parents are what our society is in which we live what country we live in what culture we are born in all these things all the 
situations created for us by our birth at a particular place determine what our moral code is, what our moral values are, what we think is good, what is bad. Once the mind accepts what is good and bad, it follows that. And therefore, a lot depends on where you are born, what your culture is, what your people believe in. Very often you will find that what is good in one country is not good in another country, what is bad in one country is not bad in another country. Not only that, what was good once, a hundred years ago, is bad today, what was bad then is good today. These good and bad changes all the time. So what we call our moral code, there is no set moral code at all. The moral code is set in our own mind and the mind then follows it and it considers this is good, this is bad and its own consideration at the time of making an intention generates the kind of karma that we have to pay off. Karma can only be created in the human life, that is why it's called karam juni. That means the, a life in which karm, karma can be created. All other lives, all other forms of life, all 8.4 million minus 1 are to pay off karma. You can imagine how much capacity we have to create that large amount of karma. It requires millions of lives to pay it off. That is only possible because the karma is not based on action but on intention. Every day we say, I wish I could do that to somebody if karma is related. Now, karma can be paid off in many forms. It can be paid off in plant life. It can be paid off in life of insects and birds and animals and human beings and angels and gods and those who created these universes. All these are means of payment. The old story goes that Lord Krishna, when he was very young, he was with his young friend Udo and they were in the forest or in the grazing ground taking the cows out for grazing and there Krishna says, Arjun, the nature of karma cannot be easily explained. We don't understand what it is. It has such great ramifications that no human being understands it. For example, at that time we saw a little ant crawling on the ground. He said, look Udo, this ant that is crawling here was once Brahma, the creator of this universe. This very ant at one time was Indra, which is the lord of one of the largest heavens in the astral plane. Because of his earlier karma, when that period of his glory ended, he became an ant. He says there is no end to this, that you cannot do something good to overcome a bad karma. If you do something good today, you are rewarded for it. You do something bad today, you are punished for it by your own mind. Rewarded by your mind, punished by your mind. Circumstances are created by which you accept their reward and punishment. That is all that karma is about. But the ramifications of karma are so deep that because we have created intentions in our mind, we are virtually trapping ourselves forever into birth and rebirth. Because we cannot escape from the cycle of birth and rebirth unless we are able to pay off our karma. And the karma keeps on increasing. We sometimes feel the best time to pay off karma might be in the form of a human being. Because we can regret, we can feel sorry, we can have a sense of guilt. Oh, we did bad things, we pay off. Good things, we enjoy. But that is not true. The karma is very little paid off in a human life. We don't have enough time. Trees can live for thousands of years. Angels can live for millions of years. Angels can live the whole life of a mind. Gods who create the universe at different levels of consciousness are created for millions of years. Imagine karma being paid off in that form. It can take so long. Human life is very short. That is why what happens in human life? What happens in human life that it not only gives us the opportunity to create karma, it also gives the opportunity to pay off karma, but the time is very short to pay off karma. 
therefore most of our karma is not paid off in one human life nor in two nor in ten if you know how much we put intention into our head you can imagine it cannot be paid off in several human life therefore we are sowing seeds here through our intention to stay forever virtually forever where does the karma go if we have not paid off in one human life it goes into a reserve a reserve that also in our own mind mind has a very long life millions of life 3 to 5 million life is estimated by some uh, cal calculators or mystic calculators they say the mind's life is as much as 3 to 5 million of physical years so in one mind you can hold on the karma of several lifetimes and keep on paying keep, keep on getting reward keep on getting punishment this therefore they divide karma into three parts one which we have created this life from past karma which we call pralabdh or destiny it is our destiny to be born like that that is our past karma from which pieces have been taken not necessarily from one life from several lives in our epic stories where there is a story of a blind king in krishna's time and he looks back he has the ability to look back into his past lives he looks back life after life life after life and he tells krishna i have seen 100 of my past lives i did nothing in any of those lives to be blind then why am i blind the krishna says look back further your 104th life that long ago you took off the light eyes of the person and that is why you are blind today he said karma does not go away even after 104 lives the karma can still be come back as part of your life in this physical body so that is why the destiny we talk of the pralabdh that we talk of which generates our destiny and this life from birth to death with all the ramifications of what will happen where we will be born who our parents will be where we meet people who we will meet where we will have accidents where we will die all these events are all pre planned and part become part of our destiny of life and based upon several lifetimes of ours of the past so the problem is not merely repaying something that happened in the last life it can be traced back way back into past lives the next part is when we use intention when do we use intention the intention is used to create new karma between the events of destiny destiny says you'll be here and then we tend we do that the difference between an old event that is pay off of karma and a new event that we are creating karma the difference is that karma when it's created has a period of deliberation of thinking that gives you a choice to do or not to do if there is no choice it's a past karma being paid off only the intention to do something is effective to create a new karma if you given a choice therefore to create a karma there is a moment of deliberation in the head a deliberation in which you use what looks like a free will the free will that we are experiencing has to be used and a deliberation takes place in our mind should i should i not do this or do that when that happens we create a new karma so that is why the new karma is distinguished from the pralabdh karma or destiny it's called karman karma karma created for the future so that add up the karma created by our deliberate action through free will is the new karma and what is then stored in the mind has been called sinchit karma or reserve karma the reserve karma is a real problem because that can hold you back here forever and that is the biggest trap that has been set up which is keeping us here lifetime after lifetime we are trapped because of that kind of karma. Now I got some good news. The best news for the merry holidays and for the new year. 
that if one finds or is found by a perfect living master and happens to get initiated by that master, it's time to go back home and one gets initiation, the sentient karma is totally erased and burnt up at the time of initiation. It's a very big thing. Happy holidays. This is one of the greatest moments that initiation by a perfect living master erases the sentient karma completely. But what is left over is the karma generated by this life. That is still there because we have at the time of initiation also lived through a, a period of creating karma. That is still pending. Therefore, if any future life is made up, is made up only of the karma of this current life, there gen therefore generally is much better than a life that would be created merely out of the sinchit karma. So that is why if we have to have another life, hopefully we should not ask for another life, but some people love it. Some people say we have enjoyed this adventure, we find out it's not a real thing and we want to come again, they can come. There can be other reasons also for wanting to come back again. And one of the reasons is that you may be in love with your master to such an extent, you say, if the master is still here, I want to come back again. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you a little true story about my own father. My dad was the initiate of great master, Baba Saman Singh. He did not attend a particular discourse of the great master, in which the great master said, if one is initiated by a perfect living master, there is no possibility for him to get more than four lives in total. The one we are having now at the time of initiation and three more, at the most. Even if there is a worse of karma has taken place before initiation, it cannot lead to more than three lives. And actually, some saints have even described the progress one makes in four lives. Swamiji of Agra, who set up the Radha Swami faith, he describes the four lives in the following way. I'll translate it for you. Ek janam gur bhakti, janam dusre naam, janam tetre turiyapad, chothe me nijdham, which is translated. If you have four lives for a spiritual journey, the first life is the is the build-up of love and devotion for your master. The second life is when you get initiated by a master. Third life is when you can reach to the top of the causal plane and discover where creation takes place. In the fourth life, you go to your true home. That's what he describes as a normal pattern. But the normal pattern doesn't mean everybody has to go through it. One can complete all the four things in one life. Or it may be spread out over a longer period that Nam started or the initiation came after three, four lives of, of developing love and devotion. So there is no fixed pattern. But when Great Master in his discourse mentioned that you cannot have more than four lives, in the evening my dad had a chance to meet the Great Master. He used to meet some people in the evening. And he said, Master, I heard that you said one cannot have more than four lives after this session. What if I want five? And great master said, Lake Raj, that was my dad's name. Lake Raj, this is your last life. Why are you looking for five? He said, I am told sometimes masters come back. And when they come back, the disciples should also be there. I am told you may come again and again. If you come fifth time, don't leave me back in such country. I want to be here with you. So everybody laughed. Then Great Master explained that it is not true that you have to come for four lives or five lives or whatever. You should think of it that we have been trapped for so long here, we should go back to our true home in this very life. So that is why Great Master always insisted that you should not worry that since it karma is over, pay off your karma of this one life, within this life, and finish off the account. He also said that 
देर आर अदर एरिया वेर यू कैन पे ऑफ करवा नॉट क्रिएट बट पे ऑफ द एक्सटल रीजन इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल टू अस फॉर पेइंग ऑफ करवा द कॉजल रीजन इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल सम पीपल से दैट सम मास्टर्स आर स्पेशली एम्फोसाइज दैट सम कर्मा इज हेल्ड अप and you have to pay it off in the astral causal stages and you cannot go to your true home till they are paid in those stages yes but that is karma only of the single life in which you get initiated then you get initiated that period which you already passed if there is too much burden on this and great master says master don't want you to come again Now I can tell you some interesting story about Great Master. He was a very clever master, a very clever gentleman. When he was being appointed as a master by his master, Baba Jamal Singh, the story runs and narrated to me by one of the people who was present at that time, old man who was present at the time when Baba Jamal Singh, Great Master's master. told him that you will be the next master there were 14 people sitting there 14 people are sitting and baba jamal singh is saying this will be my last day of talking to you my work is done my work will now be carried out by you sabal singh he pointed out to great master and great master got a little alarmed and he looked around and he said Master, there are fourteen of us sitting here. These people have done more meditation than me. I am an employee in a government job. I don't have the time to meditate so much. So why are you looking at me when there are more advanced sadhgis, advanced disciples of yours sitting right around me? And Baba Jamal Singh said, "Let me check it out because I check everything out from my own master." that is swami ji so he closed his eyes for a while and he opened his eyes he says new moj has come that means a new will has been described by the master by his master new moj has come and my master says only sabal singh will do this work a great master said master i must tell you i have got a very nice house given to me by the government and i have a lavish style of living based on my job you are living in a two little hut and you want me to leave my big house and come and live in those two huts to carry on your work is that not fair he said let me check it out so he closed his eyes and opened up for a minute and said new moj has come My master says, "When Saman Singh will do his work, he will live in a house better than the one he is living in now." Did not satisfy my master. Great master said, "But master, remember that I will be retiring soon, and my pension will be very small. You have been telling people that the next master who will come will have a large crowd of disciples. That thousands of people will come to him." So how will I manage to take care of those people with my meager pension that I will be getting from the government job? And Baba Jamal Singh closes his eyes, and after a minute he says, "New moj has come." Swamiji says that when Saul Singh will be doing that work, he will have to spend nothing from his pension, and people will bring the food and the cash and the money and whatever is needed for the. Thousands of people who will come, and none will go hungry from here. That should have satisfied Great Master Body to me, <laughs> but he was more clever than I am. He didn't stop there. He said, and this is the most important thing I'm telling you. He said, Master, you have been telling people that if one is initiated by a perfect living master. he cannot be reborn for more than four lives and the master will take care of him even if he is half way master i am trying to go back to my true home in this very life you are going to get me stuck with those people who will lead four lives <laughs> at 
great master. The old master Baba Jamal Singh says, wait a minute. And he closed his eyes. And he opened his eyes. He says, new moj has come. That whoever is initiated by Baba Sawan Singh will not have to come to a second life. This will be their last life. Very big news. And it is unbelievable how that power worked. That great master disciples do not have to come into their, in their second life. Unless they choose to. They can choose to come another life. There can be many reasons for the choice. One of the reasons why some disciples whom I recognize that they were in great pastor time initiate service. And when I talk to them, they say we feel we were there in the era, in, the, in our previous birth. We have been born in America now, we are Americans, but we remember it's feeling we have a deja vu when we go there or see something that we were possibly there in a past life. And I get the same feeling when I see those people. Then the thought comes to me that why have they come again when they were not supposed to come? That was they supposed to be their last life. So I had to check up with my own master. So the answer given was very interesting. He said that what Baba Jamal Singh said, they will not have to come, but they can come if they want. Why are they coming in the United States of America? The reason can be traced back to 1937. In 1937, Great Master told in one of his American disciples, Julian Johnson, he said, you have come here to take spirituality to America. He said the axis of spirituality which has been in the East and the Middle East for a long time. If you look at the history of the great masters who came, perfectly the masters who came, they were born in the East, they were born in India, China, and those countries, large countries. But the West was trying to make money, to build up fortunes, to build up affluence. The West will build up the affluence to a point that the riches they will make, the money they will make, will neither give them peace nor happiness. Therefore, they will look to something that is coming from the East, the spirituality. Therefore, the access of spirituality will shift. And the spiritual seeking that has been existing for a long time in the East will shift to the West and localized itself in a big way, Julian Johnson, in your country, United States of America. He said this in 1937. I was a witness to that conversation. In fact, I must tell you, it was that conversation that stuck in my mind and United States of America became, looked like a very good destination. As soon as I retired from my job, I said, I have to go to that country, United States of America, and take a ringside seat to see the show that Great Master is talking about. That's why I'm here. And I'm seeing the show. That really the axis of spirituality is shifting. He also said, Great Master also said, that whereas the people in America will think that the economic development and development of wealth is the biggest thing, they will change that. The economic rise of the West will decline. The spiritual values will go up. On the other hand, in the East, in countries like India and China, the big countries, they will lose spirituality gradually and affluence will become their object like in the West. This whole shift is taking place. We'll take, you will see this will take place 50, 60, 100 years in the next 50, 60, 100 years. This is exactly what I am saying now. They are all India, China, both countries are so busy trying to make physical wealth. That is the biggest goal for them now. And in this country, every day I find new 
people coming up new organizations coming up so many people getting more and more interested in discovering the ultimate truth so many have found out this physical world is not our own world so many new yoga centers are coming up i got very surprised when i found that there was one gentleman a comedian in hollywood his name was john roger and john roger had never been to india but in his dreams he saw a white bearded man and when he checked it out he found it was great master baba saab and say he died a few years ago in october of 2014 he passed away he was considered a master by his followers most of his followers are in hollywood actors or producers of movies comedians he himself was a comedian and he became a master teaching the principles of great masters teachings without ever having met him because he said every time he finds that he gets the messages inside from the same white bearded man in his bedroom very past way only two photographs are there both of great master baba saab and say whom he had never met how is it possible how is he doing this work and another strange thing happened how do i know about it because in in october of 2014 he passed away in october of 2015 a lady named, a lady who was working with him for 40 years she was on the typewriter preparing on the computer she was preparing a speech for their for their annual uh, commemoration of his passing away something that they were going to read at the meeting of their followers and they had set up a he had set up a society or a mission called msia movement for spiritual inner awareness it looks very similar to institute for study of human awareness that my friend jonathan is heading so when this msia was set up and they were preparing a speech she were typing accidentally she called it accident by accident a photo appears of somebody they don't know and she says an accident another photo coming in the middle of the typing when they see under the photo they see my name disciple of great master baba saab and say she jumped up and said jr has sent us this message they used to call john roger jr the jr has sent the message we should trace where he is and they contacted me and they wanted to come to chicago to uh, make a video of an interview with me whether i was saying the same things the great master was saying something like that and i had a plan to go to california to los angeles area anyway so i told them why do you want to come to chicago i am coming there so i went there i met those disciples of jr and i, I was surprised i was interviewed by one of the uh, one of the actresses who had acted long ago with a prize winner or something and she there was an interview it's all available on youtube also but i was surprised how great master's message is working out somewhere my without i had no knowledge knowledge at all then i found this is just one story a lot of people from that organization are now meeting me almost on every program in all over the country so it appear that what i am trying to do is seva for my master seems to be connected with master saying that things will move here and some people definitely have just for that reason come back to watch the show like i came to this country to sit on the ringside seat they have also come for the same purpose that was allowed is there no bar on coming again so that could be possible another gentleman also has a ministry of light and sound and 
he had a vision and there were two people running that ministry he had a vision he had been meditating for all his life but he had a vision a face appeared in his meditation deep meditation came very close to him and said i know who you are and then the face disappeared he didn't know who it was but after a few days somebody told him have you heard of ishwar puri and youtube there are talks i have never heard of them so when they showed him the picture that this was the guy who came and why did he ask me this so he contacted us jonathan that i want to know from this guy why did he say this now jonathan told me there is a guy who had this experience and he is going to ask you why you came i never went anywhere i must tell you <laughs> and why he said this supposing he comes to me tomorrow he might come tomorrow and ask me why did you say i know who you are what will i say should i pretend i really know <laughs> i should tell him sorry friend this is your own delusion your own illusions i don't know why am i only mentioning these new developments taking place which are showing that the prophecy of the great master baba saman singh is being implemented is coming true and is actually happening in the united states of america in a big way west generally it can go into into south america it will be in some parts of europe but what was in the east far east is coming here that's good news for all of us who living here the good news that we have these opportunities which we didn't have we thought the only thing to do in life was to make some green backs <laughs> i was told that the green back is very important I didn't know. Maybe the people from another culture were green bags or something. <laughs> Till I found that the currency notes here, the dollar bills here, all have a green back, and they—it's a very interesting thing that the green back, the dollar bill. Why did they pick up green? There's a G for green, G for God. I don't know if it is true, <laughs> but the green back. when i saw the green bag first time the dollar bill i was amazed because on the dollar bill of the united states there is a picture of a pyramid i don't know if you notice there is a pyramid on a dollar bill and in the top of the pyramid is a single eye a single eye like what jesus christ spoke of if thy eye be single thy whole body shall be filled with light i said this is a great spiritual country <laughs> this is truly the green back but the front of the green back is very interesting i studied that dollar bill so carefully i said this country is destined to be a great spiritual country if their whole currency which is their god which they worship it contain this message itself the message of a pyramid the message of a single eye is right on their currency it impressed me a lot but i also noticed that at the stage when i came which was in the 60s i first time i visited here at that time the green bag was considered to be like god people worshiped it so i went to the bank and i said give me some crispy notes crispy bills I put them in my wallet. Hundred dollar bills. I was not making much money, but whatever I had, I put them in hundred dollar bills. We would go to have a cup of coffee. I produce hundred dollar bill. Everybody said he's a lighted person. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I know a a poor cobbler has no chance of being a master here. A poor weaver has no chance. I'm glad Kabir and Rami Das went away in India. <laughs> Here, the enlightenment means I can produce hundred dollar bills. They would look at my bills before I paid. Crispy new. Do you know what they said? They are manufactured in my wallet. 
These are true stories. I did some business with a couple of friends here, the two black boys, and they actually believed that the bills are being produced from my wallet. And one of them said to me, I want you to produce two bills with the same number. I said, these are currency notes, these are currency bills from them, mint produced by the printing presses of the government. I don't print them. No, you can't keep on producing them like that. I said, this is such an easy way to be enlightened in this country. Have some fresh uh, $100 bills, and when you want to pay a bill of $4 or $5, produce $100, and you are enlightened. Of course, now people have really become more enlightened and they know the bills do not create spirituality. The bills do not create any enlightenment. The bills tie us down more here. These currency bills are not helping us to go inwards, they are helping us to stay outwards. So that is why the importance of the currency bills will go down. The importance of finding the real Single eye. What is single eye? Why did they make the picture of single eye on that one dollar bill? If you haven't seen it carefully, please look at the one dollar bill and see how beautifully they made on top of the pyramid. The single eye is merely a description of where we actually see with these two eyes. It's, very, it's a very interesting feature. The two eyes in the physical body cannot see the same thing. They see two images. There is no way that they can see the same thing. They are separated. And you can easily close one eye and put a finger in front of you. You see finger at one place, open the other finger in a weaker form and move to another place. We are seeing two and making them one. Where are we making them one in the physical body? I'm not talking about spiritual inner third eye center or something. I am talking simply of the two physical eyes. Where are we combining the two images? Of course, in 3D movies, they help us to combine by giving us special glasses. Either two colored glasses, they used to be green and red, and the pictures, the movie was drawn up in green and red, and two pictures were on the screen, which the two eyes would see, and because they were separate, the eyes could combine them and look like three-dimensional distance. These eyes, without those glasses, is combining two images. Where they are they combining? Can't be outside. They are seeing inside. In these eyes, can't be anywhere in front. It has to be inside. There are no glasses. When you study this carefully, that if we are seeing with two eyes, where are we combining to make it one image? You'll find it's exactly behind the eyes, in the center, at the very point which we have been calling third eye center. Location can be very specifically indicated behind these eyes, between the ears, in the center. Check it out for yourself. Therefore, we are operating even now, physically, from the third eye center. There is no other place to be looking in that world. We have two ears. Why not one? We could have had one eye and one ear. It would have been very different. And this reminds me of a joke. <laughs> Shall I tell you a story? Sometimes we make stories of um, people who come from Punjab. You know, Punjab is the state from where I came. Our culture is very different there. We call our culture agriculture. <laughs> so that is why when the Punjabis come here and look for jobs, they have little difficulty. I also had little difficulty to get a green card or to get a job. Now I was talking of the eyes and ears. That is just a way of saying that the basis for our experiences, the basis why we create distance, which we see as distance, is built into our eyes. Why we see direction built into our ears. This is a normal function of the human function of these organs. 
they are much deeper than the inner eyes and inner ears they also function very similarly they also create distance and also directions but what i was going to tell you was that three gentlemen i won't give you their names i call them a b c they came they were detectives in the police department of punjab government and they decided to immigrate and come to united states and join the federal bureau of investigation fbi an inspector of the fbi interviewed them the first guy mr a comes in and the inspector says you have shown your lot of experience of detective work i am going to test you on this screen in front of you a small computer screen i will flash the picture of an actual suspect we have in custody i'll show you for 30 seconds and you tell me if you see that person will you be able to identify him and how so a picture was flashed for 30 seconds and the man said that are no problem at all inspector i can always find him because this guy has only one eye he said you do realize it's a profile we are showing you <laughs> get out of here <laughs> then came the second person mr b is interviewed and he is flashed the same picture and says can you tell oh no problem i can find this man he has only one ear you are seeing the profile from the side of a person you are not seeing the whole person get out of here now the clever mr c comes and he says i'll show you the same picture i showed others and tell me how you can recognize it when the picture was flashed this man says i can tell you this suspect of yours is wearing contact lenses Now that was a big thing. He said, "Hold on." He checked: Is the suspect that we have in custody really wearing contact lenses? Answer was yes. Mr. C was hired. Hired was, but this inspector was surprised in 30 seconds. The man can judge from the side of the eye he is seeing that the person is wearing contact lenses. It's a That's a great ability. I'm amazed how he did it. So after a week or so, he asked Mr. C, "Please tell me, tell me genuinely, how did you know that person was wearing contact lenses?" He said, "That was simple. If a person has only one eye and one ear, he can't wear regular glasses." <laughs> I'm glad we have to wait a two years. <laughs> Just a story. <laughs> This is not from Rishi. <laughs> anyway, I'm very happy that I could make you all laugh. It's yes, nice to laugh. They say laughter is the best remedy. Uh, there is uh, many ways to laugh. I haven't generally spoken about this subject of laughter too much, but the truth is, if you examine the power of laughter, and I talk about the sense of humor and the sixth, eighth sense, the highest sense, how do we express it? Smiling, laughing, and that is why it is true. Laughter is a very good remedy. it makes you feel happy takes you out of depression takes you out of so many negative things so laughter is a good thing but there are many kinds of laughter i don't know if you have analyzed them at one time i tried to analyze what types of laughter do we have i discovered that the most common laughter why people laugh is in what they call the vowels in english language A I E O. This is the A. Ha ha ha! Like that. <laughs> Or he he he. Who? These are marvel laughter. Very common. 
the less common one is where you want to laugh but the laughter cannot come is too much in you an example would be oh <laughs> you can't even get it out but the most interesting form of laughter is where you cannot know the person is laughing or crying i'll give you an example <laughs> Glad you are laughing. <laughs> And perhaps you thought I only knew how to give spiritual talks, which is not the right thing. No, I can also talk about laughter. It's nice to see that when we have a holiday, we laugh. We enjoy our laughter. We laugh inside. We smile inside. people do meditation and i see their faces very serious it's a very serious matter when they go on a vacation they are laughing <laughs> take your meditation as a vacation take your meditation non seriously it's a vacation you're going to a better place we run to beaches and these places to have a good time and look at the variety of experiences available just by putting your attention within yourself there is no greater vacation than that there is no greater joy you can get than to travel inside there is so much to travel there is so much vastness this world looks very vast we can't even go anywhere we can find to one small little planet on which we are so small compared to the planet and if you see see the planet compared to jupiter or other planet is so small compared to the star you can't even see it you don't even respect somebody sent me a nice video in which they showed the position of our of our person we are standing with big land then the we become small then the land becomes small then the whole planet becomes small then the planet shrinks to size compared to other planet then we see the our own sun our planets are very small compared to sun then we see sun is a very small star compared to larger star when we saw the size of the largest stars they are so huge we talk of million times billion times bigger star than our star existing and then they are part of galaxies which are even bigger and for a long time people have been saying this universe this huge universe which i am describing came out of a big bang third what about 13.4 billion years ago is short period of time compared to the total time of trillion of years we can think of that a big bang took place and the whole of the universe was created they still believe it i made a prediction about 50 years ago i said if they have better telescopes they will be shocked to see what is there because if we are born 13.4 or 13.6 billion years ago that the whole universe didn't exist time and space did not exist they were generated at that time i have to fit in this concept with the concept that i learned from spiritual experiences which say that this is a very long term re recreated universes again and again there is no end to it so when i put back this idea that this expanding world 13.6 billion years ago something happened called a big bang and this universe began to appear time and space appeared and somehow the first conversion of that big energy into matter made that into a hydrogen atom that was really the simplest of atoms in the periodic table so then the hydrogen atom somehow quickly became multiplied by a metabolic process and became a helium then gradually gradually slowed down and now we have a huge periodic table of so many elements that's what they believe they are you know, the physics the physics professors are telling me this thing they were telling me for 50 years 
And I said, if that is so, then if we have a telescope that can see a star far away, from where the light takes one year to come to us, and that is the nearest star, by the way, is more than one year, light, light year away. Then when we are seeing the star, we are not seeing the star as it is now. We are seeing the star as it was a year ago. It has taken one year for us to come. And now we are looking at it. We think it is a star in the sky. And actually it was there a year ago. It is a star, say, 10, 10 million years ago. We are seeing what was happening 10 million. They acknowledge that. They acknowledge nothing can move faster than velocity of light. It takes 182,000 miles per second for light to come. And therefore, a million of light years means that what we are seeing happened a million years ago. If you go more, it can be a billion years. If you go 13.6 billion years ago, you will see the Big Bang. Very simple, elementary. So they began to build better telescopes. They have recently reached as far as almost 9 billion light years away and seen what happened 9 billion years away. It should be a much smaller universe, which is expanding. The further we go back in time, it should lead to one singularity where the Big Bang took place. Every time they have a better telescope, the universe is bigger than they ever imagined. How is that possible? They are trying to say the beginning, the universe expanded very rapidly. And then it slowed down. Okay, wait for a few years more. You will cross 13.6 billion light years and you see a much bigger universe existing. This bothered one of our scientists who died recently. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, yeah. who was paralyzed because of his illness. And he was studying, first of all, the origin of these black holes. How the black holes can absorb everything, including light. Now they say black hole can absorb your time and space. Well, towards the end of his life, when he saw that good telescopes are not showing a smaller world, but a bigger world. Obviously, the Big Bang did not have the same end. He began to talk of a new concept, multiple universes. He died saying there are multiple universes, and maybe the black hole I'm talking of is just a creative power of a universe, which fits him with the concepts we have on the spiritual path. Universe, these universes are being created all the time. All over the space and time generated. Now, if you want to understand it from the point of view of deep meditation, if you go into deep meditation and go to the causal plane and see the creation of time and space, there you discover that time and space is being generated at multiple universes simultaneously. The very thing they will discover in physics today, in astronomy today, they will discover. Imagine how much information you can have, which physics and science is trying to discover today, and they get shocked at every moment when they try to discover something new. They have to revise their physics nowadays. I mentioned that the more, most weird thing that surprised Einstein, Albert Einstein was surprised when they found that particles get, get entangled. And if two tangled particles are separated, they don't follow his principle that nothing can travel faster than the velocity of light. Because you do anything to one particle, instantly it happens to the other particle. It takes no time at all for the message to transfer. We have to break even that law that he was talking of. Only a few days ago, they were able to do something they never expected. They are breaking another law of physics. That when they transfer heat, when heat is transferred from one object to another, it needs particle of matter, a molecule or something, or an electromagnetic range existing. When heat comes from the sun to us, it travels through an electromagnetic 
layers existing. That is why heat can come. If there is a total vacuum, with there is nothing in it, not even electromagnetic field, nor a particle, heat cannot be transferred. And only the other day, few days back, they transferred heat between two plates with utter vacuum. They are revising the physics again. Physics, science, what is wrong in these approaches is they are not willing to look at the observer. Who is observing these things? And that bothered people a lot. The observer is creating the universe. Are we really creating the universe? Science says no universe is there, we are observing it and changes do take place. The quantum physics was created because somebody observed that the light photons, the particles of light that go, when they are unobserved, they go as waves. One photon can pass through two apertures in a plate and form a wave pattern on the screen. But if it is observed or measured, it becomes a particle that we are converting energy into matter by our observation. That now it's acknowledged. They wanted to see how does our observation affect it? What is the power? Only a few months back, they conducted an experiment in which they said, supposing it is not a human observer, let's say a mechanical observer, electronic observer, they put a, part, put a, a phenomenon in, in front of them, made two electronic observers and a third human observer observing the two electronic observers. And they found the, the observer saw the electronic observer observing completely different things. And they came to the conclusion in these words, there is no objective reality. They are big words. No objective reality that we are creating our reality. Mystics have been saying this for thousands of years. Why do mystics say? They examine from where it comes. And can we verify what the mystics say? Yes. Through meditation that we are taught, it is possible to by simply withdrawing our attention within ourselves, forgetting we have a body and that's what ourself looking at the inner body, going within two steps, you can find out the answer to all these questions. Why I am mentioning these things to you is that the power of knowledge, of aware, awareness that's available to us inside is so huge, so immense. They look like children playing outside who are working on the scientific uh, experiment. They won't listen to us. Everything is empirical and outside. You have to prove by what is outside Assume that to be real, then only science will begin. And they are now getting confused with these observations outside. In a way, I feel they will have to give up and say, let us look at the spiritual people, how do they describe? And I tell you, I predict this will happen. Science will give up its hands and say, yes, now let's look at what they have been saying for thousands of years, which is a better explanation than we can give. It's going to happen. I'm sharing these things with you because these are fascinating things that are happening around us at this time. Sometimes we feel we are very lucky to be born at this time. What if you were born long ago, who were building clubs and hitting each other? In the story? <laughs> I can't imagine doing that. I would be a failure in handling a big club to hit anybody. <laughs> or to say in the future, when we will find the earth, the planet earth, has lost all its beauty. We are living in satellites outside, going around the planet, and the dead bodies from the satellites are being thrown as a garbage. Then we made the planet which we love so much into a grave. I don't want to live in that age. We are living in the best of times. Let's enjoy it. Not only today's holiday, enjoy your life as the best holiday because it's the best time to live here and best time to enjoy. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. I'll see you in the New Year now.